All right, this program we're going to demonstrate uh, how to read and write to text files in Java. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. So this is just my way, but there's other objects and classes that you can use in order to do this. But this is just the way that I prefer to do it. So I'm going to write a two-part program, and let's get started. So let's go new project. I'm going to call it file IO for input output example. Now what I'm going to do in this program is I'm going to actually do two things in one single program. I'm just going to delete this here. So part one, I'm going to write demonstrate uh, writing to files. And then part two is going to be reading from the file. So you could do like like each of these in, inside different methods if you want, or you could do different programs if you want. I'm going to combine it all into one, and so just to show you how easy it actually is, uh, it's really straightforward. So let's deal with the writing to files first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create this thing called a uh, print writer object. So I'm going to write print writer, and I usually call my print writer PW, but it doesn't really matter. Equals new print writer. And inside of here, I'm going to go new file writer. And inside of here, I'm going to put in a file name. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, nums.txt. Something like that. And when we have this thing, we're going to have to fix the imports. And we're probably going to have to surround this to the try and a catch. File, oh, file writer, sorry. I made a typo there. File writer. Yeah. Now, it says there's an unreported exception called an I.O. exception, which must be caught or declared to be thrown. There's two ways we can deal with this. So one way is to just go like this. On the main, just type in throws I.O. exception. And once we're... Uh, oops, did I spell this wrong? Oh, throws. I keep making typos today. Throws I.O. exception, and we fix this import. That will solve it. That's not necessarily the best way of doing this. Okay, what happens is when you're working with files, there's a lot of possibilities that you might get errors in your program. Like, for example, maybe your hard drive's locked or something gets corrupted on the hard drive while you're writing to it or the file gets deleted. There's all kinds of issues you can have when you're working with files. So it's forcing you to deal with this thing called an IO exception. Now, if you do it right here, if you just go throw this IO exception in the main, that just means that the the program will sort of crash anywhere inside the main. So this isn't necessarily the best way of dealing with it. It's not how I would actually deal with it, ideally. It's the easiest way of doing it, but it's not the best. What I would do is use a, a try and catch. So the way a try and catch works is you write the word try, put a curly bracket, and then you close the curly bracket, and then what you after that you write the word catch, and then you're going to catch the type of error you're expecting. So the type of error I'm expecting is an IO exception. And I have to give this thing an, an, a name. So I'm going to call it IOE, but I can call it anything I want. And inside of here, all I'm going to write is um, there was an error writing to the file. Just like that. So what a try does is basically it's exactly what it says. It's going to try to run this code. It's going to try to run everything between these. And any error that occurs during that code, it's going to try and it's going to catch it, and it's going to jump down into this section here. So if it catches an I/O exception, which is an input/output exception or an error, it'll go into this, and it'll say there's an error writing to this file. Now I use system.err because what that'll do is it'll print it in red. It's going to be an actual error message. That's the only difference between that and system.out. So right now, all this literally does at this point, this thing, all this does is opens the file. That doesn't do anything else, okay? <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, 10 numbers into the file, and I'll write 10 random digits. So let's make a loop here. i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. And oh, actually, I should make a, an int first. It's going to make my variable outside here. And write random equals, here's the code for a random number. 
math.random times 100 plus 1. So that gives me my random number between 1 and 100. And what I'm going to do is write it into the text file. Now, to write it in a text file, it's exactly like you would print it on the screen. So if I was going to print this on the screen, I would write this. That's all I'm going to do to print it on the screen, right? Now, to write it into a text file, it's exactly the same, except the only thing is instead of doing a system out, I'm doing a PW. I'm writing to that print writer thing. So I can write PW.println random. Exactly like I would print on the screen, except this time I'm printing it onto the text file. Okay, so that's going to print 10 random numbers into the text file. And the last thing I'm going to do, so this will open it right here, this line. Line 14 opens it. This loop will print those numbers into the text file using this command. And the last thing I have to do is close it. So I'm going to go pw.close. Uh, pw.close is what I want. So there's three steps when you write to a file. you got to open it, do your writing, and then close it. It's very important you close it. If you don't close it, uh, sometimes your data won't get saved. It could get corrupted. There's all kinds of issues here. So I'm going to run it right now, and let's see what happens. It's going to take out that comment. I don't need it. So this program should put 10 random digits into this file called nums.txt. And I'm also going to show you where to find that, that file. So you run it, and nothing happens, which is exactly what I want to happen. Hopefully. Yeah. Oops. Let's stretch this larger here. There we go. So there was no output, right? No output on the screen anywhere. So it ran, but it stopped. Okay, so let's check the file and see if there's actually 10 numbers inside of it. So there's a couple ways of getting to it. The easiest way is to go under this files tab here. Find your program. So it's, uh, oh, I have two different file I.O. examples here. Ooh, look at that. I have two different ones. So this is the one I'm currently working on, the one with the space. So I should just get rid of that one. One second here, just so I don't get confused. That was from a previous example I had done. Okay, so this is my program. It's called File IO Example. Right here under Files is where it is. If I open that up, I can see nums.txt. I can double click it, and there's my random numbers. So if I run it again, I should have different numbers inside there. So now I have a 92 at the beginning. Run it again. I get an 81, so it keeps overwriting that file, which is exactly what I want. Um, sometimes you need to like uh, save the information. You don't want to overwrite it all the time. That's called appending, and that's for another day. But right now, it's, it's doing exactly what I want. It's actually overwriting the content of the file every time, and that is the file right there. Now, if I want to actually see the file in like Finder on a MacBook, okay, where what I have to do for my computer is go under Macintosh HD, and for me, it's under Users, and it's under P. Roson, and all of my NetBeans projects are in here, actually. They're under NetBeans projects. And go in here, and here's where the file I.O. example is going to be. And it's located... Oh, that's not it. That is my old project. It's this one. I've got so many old ones. This is the one right here. Okay, so this is the one that I'm working with, nums.txt. Uh, Open with this is the correct one here. It starts at 81. <clears throat> so that's where you find it. Again, I got so much old junk in here. I'm gonna get rid of these. These are old projects from before. So that's where it is. So for me, it's under Mac HD, users, P Roson, NetBeans projects, and then I can find it. And right now, because I didn't put a path in, so right here there's no folder name. Where it's located is just the root of the project. It's not inside the source directory or anything like that. It's just located right here. So that's how you write to a file. Now, if I want to read that information, here's how I'm going to do it. So for reading the information, I'm going to create another thing called a buffered reader object. I'm going to call it BR. I'm going to say equals new buffered reader. And I'm going to go new file reader. And I'm going to put nums.txt again. Just like that. i got to fix my imports on this. And again, it's giving me the same problem here. 
We got an unreported exception, a file not found exception. Uh, I'm just going to use the IO exception. That's more of a generic one. That'll work. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. So try. And then catch any kind of IO exception. And then this time, I'm just going to make it say uh, error reading file. There is an error reading from the file. <clears throat> And sometimes you actually need more details. Sometimes what you can do is you can actually print this thing out too. Maybe it's a good idea to do that too. I'm just going to print out the IOE object as well. <clears throat> sometimes you'll get more information if you print that. Like if I make a typo here and that file doesn't exist, I'll show you what that looks like. But um, I'll, ma I'll make it crash on purpose so you can see what the error looks like. Okay. All right, so right now I've opened the file for reading. And you might actually be wondering, like, why am I attaching a buffer reader with a file reader? And why, why am I attaching a print writer with a file writer? So basically what happens is that the file writer essentially will write one byte at a time into the text file. It's not good at writing strings or, um, like, multiple characters. So this thing called the print writer, what it'll do is it'll take... Um, like an input, like this random input, and convert it into a byte stream and send it into the file writer, and the file writer will deal with the byte stream and write it into the text file. Uh, it's kind of like a little chain here. And uh, yeah, so the like I said, the file writer is good at writing bytes, but for us to write bytes, it's kind of a pain. So we use this thing called the print writer and attach it to it, and it makes life easy for us. Same thing with the buffer reader here, okay? The file reader will read the bytes and all the raw information out of the text file, and what the buffer reader will do is convert those into strings for us. So you can read in entire lines, for example, and it makes life real easy instead of getting like a byte stream out of that file. So let me show you how this works. So the text file here, I know for a fact, has 10 lines. So I'm going to read in 10 lines and using a for loop. Oops, I plus plus. And I'm actually just going to create a string called line. And I say line equals uh, br dot read line. Just like that. So every time br dot read line is called, it'll read one line at a text file and it will store into this variable called line. Okay, and let's print that line out. Let's make sure we got it. And that's it. And then finally, it's probably a good idea to close it as well just to close our buffer reader. It's, it's, I, the, the reading one is not as important in my opinion to close as a writing one. Uh, when you write it, you have to, you have to close it. It's like, it's like clicking save. It's, it's almost like working in Word. You type something up and then you forget to hit save. Yet when you come back to it, that stuff might be saved. It might not be, right? So it's a good idea to close it all the time. Reading is not as big of a deal, but it's still a good idea to close it anyways, in my opinion. Okay, let's run it and see if everything works correctly. So it's going to write my stuff, and then it's going to read it immediately afterwards. This should match the file. Yeah. So it did work. So again, part one, it, it wrote 10 random numbers into that file. Then it closed it. Part two, it reopened the file again, but this time it reopened it with a buffer reader instead. It had a loop that runs 10 times, reading in one line at a time and printing the line, and then it closed it. Now, say, for example, it made a typo, right? And I tried to, to read num sh instead. Okay, watch what's going to happen here. It's going to crash. Okay, so we got the error message. This is an error reading from the file, right? But because I actually printed out the IO exception as well, it gave me a little bit more detail here. It actually told me it's a file not found exception, right? So it's more clear to me that, hey, I probably have a typo here. So sometimes it's a good idea to actually print out those exceptions. So even on this one here, I'm going to do the same thing. IOE. Just in case there is an actual error, then at least I can figure out what the error is a little bit easier. It's just not very clean from a user point of view. If you see an error like that, that's kind of a mess, right? So I, just for my purposes right now, I'm going to leave that in there. Okay, so I fixed the uh, file name back in, make sure it works again. 
And there we go. Now, I'm just going to do one last thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers and I want to figure out the average of them. See, the problem with this is that <clears throat> when I read in a line, it's coming in as a string. Okay, these are numbers. I want them to be integers. So for me to do that, I have to do a couple more steps. I have to go int. Um, let's call it num. And then here, I'm going to go uh, num equals integer dot parse int of line. So this converts the line to an int. And then if I want the average of those things, what I got to do is add that to a sum. Oops. We'll start off the sum as being 0. And we're going to go sum plus equals num. That'll just attach or add the number into the sum, and we'll add it all up. And then once the sum is figured out, I can calculate the average. So double AVG equals sum divided by uh, 10.0. And then I can print it out. The average equals AVG. <clears throat> so again, what's happening is sum is starting off at 0. I'm going to read in the line, convert it, and I'm going to add it into my sum. So I'll add them all up as I go. And then once I'm done printing everything, I can just take that sum and divide it by 10 because I know there's 10 numbers. And that should give me my average. Let's see. Yep, that worked out perfect. So I hope you got a little bit out of this video. Again, I showed you how to read from a file. Use this. Um, again, I know for a fact that I'm writing 10 uh, lines in here, so that's why this worked. And when I read, I know for a fact I had 10 lines. If you don't know how many lines are in the file, it's a bit more challenging. You can use different types of loops to, uh, to figure that out, but this is a very simple example. And uh, yeah, this is section how to read from a file. So hopefully this makes sense to you, and hopefully you'll be able to use this in future programs.